morning boys and girls. It's a pleasure again to come before you this Sunday morning to conclude on the subject that we began last Sunday. I hope we do remember what we looked at last week. Yes, <clears throat> last week we introduced the subject of justification. We introduced the subject of justification. A big word it is indeed, and yet we tried to break it down to our understanding. <clears throat> we said justification is an act of God whereby he pardons or forgives us of our sins and accepts us as righteous in his sight. Justification is an act of God <coughs> whereby he pardons or forgives us of our sins and accepts us as righteous in his sight. In other words, boys and girls, what that means is that God forgives you and me of our sins. And when he looks at us, he sees us as righteous people, as holy people, as clean people. We also mentioned that in justification, God does two things. Number one, he pardons us of our sins. Number two, he accepts us as righteous in his sight as we saw from Romans chapter 4 and verse 6. But in Romans chapter 3, verse 21, uh, going downwards to 26, let me just read it. <clears throat> but now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all those who believe, for all those who believe, for there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus, whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation in his blood through faith for a demonstration of his righteousness, because in the forbearance of God he passed over the sins previously committed. For the, the demonstration of his righteousness at the present time, so that he would be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. <clears throat> Last week, boys and girls, we also reminded ourselves that you cannot work for this justification, for this forgiveness of sin and being counted as righteous in God's sight. You cannot work. You can't say, I've been justified because I do good works. We also mentioned that you cannot be justified because you claim to be keeping the law, the Ten Commandments. The Bible says, apart from the law, meaning that justification actually comes not because you have kept the law, not because you have kept the law. We saw that it is actually a gift from God. It is a gift from God. And this morning, what I seek to do, and we'll just spend a few minutes, is to conclude on this subject of justification. We have already reminded ourselves of the meaning of justification, that it is an act of God whereby he pardons or forgives us of all our sins and accepts us as righteous in his sight. Yes, but what is the basis? What is the basis of this justification? Firstly, we must mention that it is Christ offering himself, okay, as, an, as a, uh, how can I put it? As an offering, if I may, yes where Christ offered himself on the cross to die for you and me. Boys and girls, when man sinned, 
when man sinned, God was angry. Okay? The wrath of God was aroused, so to speak. And God needed someone, those are big words we are going to use again, to appease his wrath. In other words, boys and girls, only Jesus could satisfy God's anger or God's wrath. So the basis of our salvation was that Jesus Christ died for you and me on the cross. And that death satisfied God the Father. You and I were supposed to be punished for our sin. You and I were supposed to endure God's wrath. And none of us, boys and girls, were going to stand that wrath. But Jesus, the Bible says, became our, our propitiation. In other words, he died in our place and he appeased God's wrath. He was the perfect sacrifice for sin, boys and girls. He was the perfect lamb, the perfect sacrifice. Okay? When Christ died, God the Father was satisfied that the sins of man okay, could be forgiven because Christ was the perfect sacrifice. That was the basis for our salvation. Okay? Christ giving himself on behalf of sinners. Okay? And also, the basis is that we must put our faith in Christ. Now that Christ has died, he has appeased God's wrath. He has satisfied God's wrath. God is pleased that the perfect sacrifice has been offered in Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. You and I must therefore put our faith in Christ. We must put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because he has died for our sins. And all we need to do is to look to the Lamb. To look to the Lamb and our sins will be forgiven. Just that word, look to the Lamb. Boys and girls, as simple as it is, and yet there are some boys and girls, men and women, who will not look to the Lamb. And yet Christ says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. So boys and girls, the basis is that Christ died for our sins and he was a perfect sacrifice. He offered himself on behalf of sinners. And secondly, that we must put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, we must put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because faith, actually, is the instrument by which we receive this justification. Faith is the instrument by which we receive this justification. When you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, when you turn away from your sins, when you put your trust in the Lord, you have actually exercised that faith. Okay? It is a gift that comes from God. And when you have these promptings that you want to be a child of God, boys and girls, remember that the Spirit of God is working in you. The Spirit of God, God, the Holy Spirit himself, is working in you, pointing you to the Savior for your justification. Pointing you. The object of justification, boys and girls, is for all believers. All who believe. The object of justification is for all who believe. Boys and girls, you cannot sit there and say, I am the chief of sinners, therefore God will not save me. You cannot sit there and say, this justification is for the Jews only. No. The Bible is very clear. Okay? For both Jews and Gentiles. It was also true of
those who were lived in the Old and the New Testament. Okay, by faith Abraham was made right with God. We read in Hebrews and chapter 11. So boys and girls, when you begin to have these conv convictions, when you begin to feel that you must turn away from your sins, it is actually the Holy Spirit working in you. And you must believe, because this justification is for all those who believe. Remember that we have said that it is actually a gift from God. You cannot work for justification. You cannot claim that you have been justified because you have done one or two things. You have offered money to the church. You have helped the poor. No, those things come after you have been justified. After you have believed. The first thing, boys and girls, is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. To exercise your faith as it, as it were, okay? To put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be justified. So here we see, boys and girls, that the basis for our justification is that Jesus died on our behalf. On the cross of Calvary, when Christ was dying as a perfect sacrifice, he was actually appeasing the wrath of God. Okay? In other words, boys and girls, God was satisfied that the perfect sacrifice for the forgiveness of sin was offered. None other sacrifice was going to satisfy God's wrath, but Christ Christ's sacrifice indeed satisfied his wrath. Therefore, even as we conclude in this subject of justification, boys and girls, I want to ask you this question. Have you received Christ? Have you been justified? Remember what the Bible says, Christ is the justifier of those who have faith in Jesus. Okay, he is the justifier. Have you been justified? If you haven't, boys and girls, this is the time to turn away from your sins and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The emphasis here, like the scriptures are telling us, is to put your faith, your faith in Christ, not in Muhammad, not in Buddha, but in Christ. To put your faith in Christ who was offered as a perfect sacrifice. Who died on your behalf and on my behalf. Therefore, I leave you with this question. Are you justified this morning? Amen.